So you're thinking about buying your first investment watch. Here are five things to consider before pulling the trigger. Number one is going to be pretty obvious. I hate to say it, but the most important thing you gotta check is, is this watch even an investment? I say this because nowadays, if you're gonna buy, for example, a big bang in rose gold, it's not really considered much of an investment piece right now due to the fact that they're not really holding strong in the market. So is this watch that I'm interested in an investment? Look, every single investment watch doesn't necessarily have to be a Patek or a Rolex. There are plenty of brands out there that hold value, like for example, an Omega. But the question is, is the model that I'm choosing, is there a demand for it? Is it something that's steadily rising or at least holding price? This is the type of hobby that you could spend X amount of dollars. And in reality, compared to other hobbies, you have most of your money there, which will still be in a form of an investment. I used to say when I was buying a watch, that I wasn't spending $10,000 on a watch, I was saving $10,000 on a watch. Nowadays, watch prices are steadily rising, so people are seeing them more and more like investments. But even then, you gotta ask yourself the question when you're buying this watch, what if the market takes a dip? Would you lose your ass on this watch? So you wanna be very careful because there's a lot of off brands. I'll give you an example. If you bought a rose gold Cartier C-Timer for retail price, that's not an investment watch. Number two, do a quick market research on the watch you're trying to buy. This is important because clearly you need to make sure that the price you're paying is within the right range. I never really like to use Chrono 24 for prices because let's just face it, the prices are crazy. On one end, there's prices that are very, very low probably because they don't have the watch and they wanna do a bait and switch and try to sell you something else. And then on the other hand, they got these really high prices hoping to catch a sucker. I tell people all the time, go on Chrono 24 and see what the price of the Hublot King Power 48 millimeters going for in rose gold. They want pretty much retail price for it. They want 48,000 when I won't even give you 12. But, however, you can go on Chrono 24 and get an idea. If the price that you're paying is way higher than the highest one for sale, then obviously that's kind of an expensive price for that watch. So do a little homework, go on eBay, check and try to see some listing online, but get a general idea to see if you're getting a decent deal. That is obviously one of the most important things if you're trying to buy an investment piece. If you're trying to buy a watch just for yourself and you really don't care, then go on with your bad self. It really doesn't matter. So obviously call around, look around, and see what the prices are for this watch in the market so you can educate yourself. Clearly at this point right now in the game, you can't go by the retail price. So if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and hit that button now. Number three, make sure you're buying off a reputable dealer or company. You know, who is this person that you're buying off of? You gotta do your homework on them. If it's from the internet, a lot of times I like to buy from the same country that I'm in. For example, I'm in the US. I feel a lot more comfortable buying off of a dealer in the US. Not only so much about because of the person, but having to do with the whole importation of the watch and the taxes, and I don't have to deal with all that. But you wanna do your homework on the company. You know, like they say, sometimes if the price is too good, it might be too good to be true. I'd rather pay a little bit more and at least know I'm buying from a reputable source so that later on, perhaps when I wanna do a trade or make another move, I can build a rapport with that company and sell the watch back to them, which in turn makes for a longer relationship with that company. Some other things you wanna check on are form of payment and also return policy. You know, it really shouldn't be a final sale if you're buying something like this. Any good company would give you at least a couple days to figure out if it's the right fit or if perhaps maybe you even like the condition that they promised. So you wanna check all those things. Do your homework on the company, read the reviews, or maybe just ask around and check up for their reputation. Asking around is important. You can't always go just by the reviews because there's people out there that will never be satisfied. Let's just face it. Their expectations are just way too high and a review alone doesn't necessarily describe the entire history of a company.
Number four, what comes with the watch? These are important questions. Does it have the papers, the box, all the links? Some of these things have a little gold pusher that's part of the whole package. Does it have any warranty? Not necessarily manufacturer's warranty because some of these watches, they pretty much don't break and the manufacturers don't even cover anything. But for some of these watches that are already out of production, you wanna know if the company is at least giving you a year warranty or something. Ask questions, what comes with the watch? If you're buying something that's really special, really rare, and you're paying a premium, then really you wanna make sure it has the most possible because if it doesn't have the box or the papers, that can also still be an investment piece, but the price is gonna be a little bit different. I'm the type of guy that I always say, I'm more of a price and condition type of buyer. I don't really care what watch or model it is. As long as the price is right, that's really what matters to me. I'll take a super crisp, nice condition watch with no papers over one that's full set that kind of went and did three tours in South Beach and returned all mangled. That's just my personal opinion because some watches, once they get damaged to a certain point, they can't be fixed. And when you're thinking about long-term investment, that's gonna be the one thing that you're gonna be looking out for. So just ask those questions because this happened to me too. I get all excited and then by the time it's already at your house, it might be too late to figure out that it didn't have this and it didn't have that. Everybody has different expectations of what they're buying. Some people want only brand new. Other people have to have full set. Then you have what I call a collector set, which has pretty much everything with even maybe a signed card from the person that originally sold it to the first buyer. But ask the questions, now's the time. Number five, last and final, and for me it's almost one of the most important as well, is am I going to like this watch three to five years from now? Because if you're quote unquote buying an investment piece, not that you have to hold it for 20, 30 years, but in reality, you're thinking you're gonna buy something for a while and have it and enjoy it and hopefully have all your money there. Is it something that you're gonna like? Or is it something that you just like right now and maybe six months down the line, you're not gonna like? So you wanna ask yourself, if it's gonna be a long-term investment piece, is it a classic? Is it something that's good for all sorts of occasions? Is it something I'm gonna like later on? This happens to me all the time. I mean. I have watches that have been my favorite watch today. And tomorrow, well not exactly tomorrow, but a couple years from now, it's just not that special. But then again, there's watches like, I hate to say it because it's just, you know, plain boring Rolex, but something like a Submariner, a Presidential, things like that, they really never get boring, for me at least. It's something that's timeless. It's almost like a black suit. You can always wear it at any time, at any place. So you wanna ask yourself that question. Is this something I'm gonna like in the future? Because if it's something too exotic, too niche, too specific, that could be a problem in the long run, not only for you liking it, but also for the resale. So if you're ready to pull the trigger, these are five quick things you can check on to make sure you are going on the right track. Feel free to comment below if there's anything that you think I might have missed. And if you like this video, like and share it. Also, subscribe to my new YouTube channel. Damn, look at that suit right there. <laughs> Not that I'd actually wear that, but I don't know, never say never, but damn, it just looks crazy and expensive. This is over the top. This, this is too much. I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say here. This is too much. This is ridiculous. Looks like my grandma's curtains or something. <laughs> <laughs>